Hello my fellow pilots and welcome again to another episode of Star Citizen FM. Star Citizen FM is a fan community show focusing on anything related to Star Citizen, the community, or anything else in the verse that might catch your fancy. Star Citizen FM is hosted by yours truly, Dr. Hawk. So join me today on this very special episode as we interview a very interesting individual. Good evening, my fellow pilots and citizens, and welcome to another episode of Star Citizen FM. A bit of a special today as I bring you a rather interesting individual. Some of you know him from his Kerbal adventures, and others have recently seen him backing Star Citizen. After a few little emails and a little bit of working at it, we have finally gotten together. So, ladies and gentlemen, I present you Scott Manley. Hello, Scott Manley here <laughs> for uh, Star Citizen FM. Hi, how are you? All right, very nice, Scott, and thank you very much for taking the time to talk to me. No problem. So, with some of the recent events, such as the Hang release, I think a few citizens now know that you are an avid backer of Star Citizen. Normally you're working about in Kerbal Space Program, but I thought we'd take some time to talk about it. You know, what, what brought you to Star Citizen? Uh, well, what brought me to Star Citizen was I had a lot of fans that kept emailing me and saying, when are you going to cover Star Citizen? Uh, and I backed it back in October, but really the first video I made about it was in, um, when would it be? It would have been Jul July, just before the closing of the lifetime or the, you know, the switch to the new website. And then I was like, okay, there's like six days left. If you don't back it now, you're, you know, you're going to be out of veteran backer status. I should probably do a public service announcement. So I, I did that. And yeah, you know, that was, it was really what the thing that brought me in was uh, just people asking. I, I, uh, I had known about the Wing Commander games and I looked at them when I was younger, but I never owned a machine that could play them. In fact, the one machine I got that uh, had Wing Commander 3 like with it, it wasn't powerful enough to run it, and in fact, it had some fundamental DMA driver problem, which meant I could not get audio. Um, yeah, I, I had the same issues as a kid. I couldn't play it either. Yeah, it was rather unfortunate. Um, but but it, so anyway, yeah, I, I, there had been two back to um, Kickstarters at roughly the same time. Uh, if you remember, there was also Elite Dangerous appeared around about the same time, and I actually yes, put more did. money into that originally. But uh -oh. Star Citizen has been really doing the PR business a whole lot better. And uh, I think over time, I just kind of nickled and dimed myself up from like a, an Aurora up into a freelancer. And you know, now I'm like rear admiral status. Uh, <laughs> and, and it all came very naturally. You have but to love that little ticker that they put in the bottom of your store tab that shows you how much you've spent currently in, in your entirety on the game. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really kind of... But I, I will have to say that, you know, it is an investment for me because, you know, I'm getting audience from the people watching these occasional videos. And, you know, there hasn't been much to show, but I've tried to cover as much as I can with the limited materials available at this time. Well, you do pretty thorough explanations on a lot of your videos. In fact, um, I'll branch out a little bit here temporarily. Kerbal Space Program, I think, is how many on the internet know you. And having you on Star Citizen and listening to your voice and got walkthroughs, <laughs> I think would be very interesting. It would. I'd you're like very, to you're very so. informative. You teach your audiences very well, and you explain things in a manner that makes it even someone like me understand Kerbal Space Program. <laughs> yeah. Well, you see, the reason I actually started making videos was because I saw Kerbal Space Program. And I saw a bunch of people making like videos and making all sorts of assertions about how the game was to be played and you know, they were making all sorts of completely bogus assertions. They had no clue about science. And I, you know, I, I spent ten years studying astronomy and I you know, I put together a little video on how to do uh, how to get into orbit and a bunch of other stuff and that really was the seed and it it's turned around into quite a quite a big thing. I'm almost at a by the end of the year, I'll probably be at two hundred thousand viewers, which is nice. Well, again, congratulations to you on that. So, yeah. do you see yourself doing something similar for Star Citizen, though? It, um, they they have planned Newtonian physics as well as possible orbital mechanics. I mean, we don't know yet, but it could be that could be there. 
Yeah, I, this, judging by what I've heard about their zone design, about the... Instance. Instances, yeah. I mean, they, they're they not really going to have that scale of orbital mechanics. And on also, they're uh, using CryEngine, which has some very uh, severe restrictions on their... Uh, the size of, of space that they can cover within a zone. I mean, I think it's something like four kilometers by four kilometers is the largest level available in CryEngine. So either they have to scale down their spacecraft within that, or, you know, you're not going to fit, you're going to fit like one Bengal and, and maybe a couple of other Idrises in there, you know, you're not really going to have much room. So the, it it's hard to match the Star Citizen, you know, what Star Citizen is talking about in terms of scale to what I've been looking at in Kerbal Space Program scale, I guess, is <laughs> I'm just rambling a little now, am I? No, it's fine. It's it, it's very very fair. Like I say, plan because you know it's an it's an ideal and thing that they'd like to try. But as you've said, CryEngine has its limitations. Right. And uh, so, I've worked in it a little bit myself. So unless maybe some black magic happens over at their end, uh, it's all speculative at this point. It is largely speculative. I guess what I'm saying is that yeah, I do like to make things that teach people things. That really it feels like a justification. Otherwise, it's just um, it's just filling time, and sometimes that's a good thing to do. Uh, but I'm not a funny person. I am a I am a person that dredges up facts all the time. So yeah, I mean, I'll cover Star Citizen, and if if people will watch it, I will cover I will cover what I can. Um, I guess, I guess with the Kerbal Space Program, I just had a particular advantage in that I understood orbital mechanics. The, the very much you know, non-intuitive way that orbital mechanics work, you know, where you'll thrust away from an object and half an orbit later you're closer to it because you did that, you know. Right. So, uh, yeah, Star Citizen. <laughs> well, okay, well, let's move on to this to maybe a more personal aspect. Star Citizen, obviously is of an interest it is a space game after all what do you think you know for you you find interesting about it no throwing uh, the science actually, the a little bit to the side most, yeah the thing that fascinates me most is the the lightning in a bottle that is their fundraising that it is just a phenomenon which is unequaled elsewhere on the internet and it's not necessarily logical i'm looking at this trying to figure out where it's all coming from and the best I can figure is that there's a, a kind of a mass it's like being part of a club is spending money on this and so <laughs> you, you know I think there's some big backers who are like me that they've they were nerds in the 80s when Wing Commander came out and they just happened to have the computer skills which meant they could work with their uh, the auto exec bat and you know the the MS DOS configuration to free up enough memory so they could run that, and of course, if you had those skills, then you were well placed to uh, you know get into the tech industry, which uh, had some success over the last twenty years. And I I know a couple of people who you know made millions from internet companies who are throwing down big cash on Star Citizen, and I, I suspect that a lot of people are not necessarily to that degree, but there's a certain core of people that fit that profile and spent a fair amount of cash on it. So you could say maybe Star Citizen appeals to a younger, more boyish version of yourself, like all of us? I Actually, no, I think it's people that, that are my age that are really putting down the big bucks, I guess Boy, is what I'm saying. Boyish as a relative term. Uh, it, it's yeah. a young, younger stage. I, as a, for me, I was way too young to generally appreciate it, but some of my older friends have mentioned that. It's like, oh, it makes me brings back that excitement I had. When I, back when I had Wing Commander and a bunch of free time, and now I have a family, and yeah, <laughs> there there goes the life. So there goes the life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there goes the life. So another question that might be of interest: You said already that you pledged uh, for a few ships. What what have you pledged for? Oh man. Okay, so this is actually kind of complicated. I originally started out with like the cheapest thing that would get me alpha access. So I bought the digital mercenary i believe the 30 uh, i bought the mercenary pack because i wanted the white citizen card and i still have the white citizen card in front of me so i'm quite happy with that um so that was like 40 bucks and then what happened later on was the the aurora lx came out and they were like you know five bucks more i was like oh sure i'll spend five bucks more uh 
then and then it started. What and then it started. Then it started. Um, as the end of the kind of and as the end of the pledge um, lifetime uh, insurance came along, I I upgraded first to a an Origin 300, and then upgraded that to a 325. And that was the first thing I made my hangar video with. And then I, so I made this hangar video and I thought, wow, there's one shit, this is terrible. I better put an Aurora in there. So another 25 down. <laughs> so that's, uh, <laughs> that's how that worked. And uh, so from there, I was like, oh crap, okay. You know, if I upgrade just a little more, I could get some physical rewards. <laughs> so I was like, oh, well, I'll just, just upgrade for the freelancer. Because at that point, to make the videos, people were actually saying, hey, you know, here's my login credentials. So I was like, okay, I'll just um, make some videos with your, you know, your fancy rear admiral, your, your, um, the various spacecraft that people had. So, so, but I hadn't had a freelancer, so I just bought the freelancer and made a video with that as well. Yeah, a few people and, are doing the sharing videos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so from there then, I think I, I've then switched out to, again to the Super Hornet but um, through some, let's say by being nice and helpful to people with their lifetime insurance, uh, many people have tipped me, you know, five dollars a time, and I've now got the rear admiral as, as well as that. So, yeah, um, there may actually be some more stuff coming. But uh, I also got on the the lifetime on the the waiting list as well, which has right. really just been closed down. And while everyone else was getting on there for like scythes and is idrises, I I was like, I, I missed the Aurora LX that I had melted down, and so I I actually got that one back, and I was quite happy. But that's going to be in the sale, so I needn't have bothered. <laughs> <laughs> so I think yeah, a lot of it's really, you know, it's been a slow progression up to what I have. So yeah, I have an Aurora LX, a Super Hornet, and a rear, uh, you know, a, a Constellation. Did you upgrade your Hornet to the uh, Hornet the F7A Hornet. I, I, during the Veterans I did Day not sale? because I was not... I was confused as to what they were really saying about whether it was a skin or a body kit or whether it actually made any difference. I was it's a body you know, kit. somewhat skeptical. It's a body kit as far as it's I It's a body it. kit. But it's, yeah, it, it's pitched as being... As having some changes that will be required to make the military version, but I'm not really clear on exactly what that would do. So I never pitched for it because I figured I'll be able to get that in game. And it's the core hull is really the core hull is the important thing. And it sounded like that would be available in game. I guess is what I'm I'm saying. Yeah, it sh it should be. I d I d still don't think they'd sell the actual Hornet F7A. I was initially confused and told my listeners that. You would be able to get the Hornet F7A, and it was only after I read the fine print it said it was a conversion kit. So, you're getting a Lamborghini, not quite. But yeah, well, you know, conversion kits are big where I live. Uh, yeah, I live in in Oakland, and everybody mucks around with their cars here. Yeah, I'm in Canada. Not in a necessarily drive, an intelligent way. <laughs> if I'm in Canada, and if you drive a Lamborghini here, you'll have that swallowed up by potholes just as big as the car. <laughs> So. What about a Tesla? That's what everybody drives here if they want the bling now. I don't think we have Teslas up here. So, no. Nope. Okay. Mo moving back to the Star Citizen interview at hand. So you have your ships. You have an interest in Star Citizen. What kind of role do you see yourself playing in Star Citizen? Like, would you I... be blowing up people or would you be helping people? I will probably be... Uh probably be going with whatever my friends are doing which probably means space pirates of some sort who are you your know, friends if I might ask oh I, I am uh, I'm part of the something awful forums which means I'm generally labeled as a goon uh, oh boy oh yeah boy. I, I, I'm not I'm not one of these goons that scams you I'm just a goon that uh, is wants to play the game with a lot of friends ladies and gentlemen Scott Manley member of goon swarm Member of Goon Swarm, yeah. <laughs> member of I, yes, I, I'm also known in Eve Online. Member of Goon Swarm, uh, although again, I've, I, I'm one of the nicer ones. I don't scam people, but I do blow your ship up. <laughs> I, I, en I enjoy Goon quite a bit. I've had uh, about three or four years put into Eve, and 
I had nothing but respect for Goon, especially I think that was the one day they had of, let's crash the market and Eve, and developers said, oh, yeah, sure, go for it. Well, there was the, there's a couple of cases. I mean, we do actually, ha we have actually spent a lot of time manipulating markets for our own profits. But there's the ice markets, which we very famously inflated by, you know, ice only comes from certain specific ice belts. Correct. And so we would go in and we would kill anyone in those specific ice belts only. So we could control the flow of ice. And ice basically is like the fuel of For player life. operated stations. Player operated stations and capital ships. If you're going to jump a capital ship around, you need to fuel it. So the Galente is a particular race and they would have a bunch of systems and we would do something called suicide ganking where, you know, if you're in high sec, and you attack somebody without permission, you will get Con killed Concord. afterwards. But you have 10 seconds to kill the other person, and <laughs> it's quite possible to kill the other people in that 10 second window. So we made a point of basically killing anyone mining this particular kind of ice, and then, of course, in the weeks leading up to this, we had stocked up on piles of this stuff, <laughs> and the price tripled, quadrupled, and we were selling off and making a bunch of cash at it so we'll and of course oh go ahead sorry i was just going to say of course you know that whole thing then paid for more ships to kill more people and <laughs> you know it it's just the way it works so with star citizens manufacturing uh, process as well as the infrastructure that they have planned has goon looked into any sort of ideas I don't or have you have you yourself are looked there. Into? not yet just you the know there's so much speculation right i mean there's a lot of there's a lot of goons who like to who like the idea of flying bombers, let's say. Uh, but we don't know whether bombers will be awesome ships or not. You know, there's another bunch of goons that are all about going fast, but we don't know whether speed will really be important. And yes, there are several goons sitting on some very expensive, you know, pledge packages, let's say. You know, it's uh it there's too many unknowns, but I would probably say that our you know, our mercantile, our mercantile, our analysis people will look at these things and we will try to manipulate markets because, you know, that's how we like to play games. So you yourself will be manipulating or what, what will Scott Manley doing when it be, be doing I, when it comes to ground? I'll counting? be having fun and if I really get into it, uh, we'll see if there's some analysis that can be done. You know, if we find... it, We, we just don't know what there is, but... You know, half of the time in EVE Online these days, I am literally pulling up, you know, data from the database dumps and analyzing bits of the market and figuring out how best I can make cash just by, you know, selling the right thing or melting down or building things. So, you know, it's a, a level of detail that's not really, it's not really playing the game, it's figuring out how to not play the game and still make piles of cash. I think that's something that a lot of people would like to be able to do in real life. Yeah. So, yes. <laughs> going to another question, obviously Star Citizen is still in a very early stage. It's too early for us to tell, as you've even already mentioned, the specifics, the very core things that we need to formulate what we'll be doing when it comes to the game. So is, even though we've been shown a few things and a few things have been set in stone, is there anything that you yourself would be uh, wanting to see come from Star Citizen, like even if it's just a wish that might not even happen, such as orbit, orbits? Well, I'd like to see uh, asteroid mining. That would be a kind of that's something we, we've we got the the latest goal says what kind of ship would you like and the most popular thing is a mining ship so I, I kind of want to see asteroid mining because there's all going to be these asteroid fields and I, I kind of would like to see a complete you know resource cycle going on there it's kind of lame but you know I, I uh, you know I'm a fan of asteroids let's see <laughs> it's not actually a, a lame thing. Uh, keep in mind CryEngine being that you can get out and walk around. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the uh, mod MechWarrior Living Legends. Uh, I'm not directly familiar with it. I know of it. It's a combined arms game focused on mechs and I try to tell a lot of people who aren't familiar with Star Citizen the playstyle or at least what I think it will be like being kind of like MechWarrior Living Legends or what, even Battlefield, it's combined arms. You walk around as the character, 
but you physically can interact with any one of these vehicles. And Star Citizen being a ship game can be any one of those ships. So your mining ship, your 300i, your Aurora. And all you'd have to do is either position your ship to mine or even get out yourself and walk around on that asteroid. Possibly even drift off into space if some guy comes by and... Astronaut is off structure! That... Uh, grab, Astronaut gra is off structure! Gra I repeat! <laughs> okay, <laughs> you saw gravity. <laughs> I see... Why? Well, yes, I have. We can talk about that movie later. <laughs> it's hard not to see it when everybody's asking you, have you seen it? Yeah, that's a that's a good point. But go, going to the topic, yeah, drifting off into space, uh, even just because you messed up in Star Citizen from your asteroid mining, could be pretty fun. Yeah, I mean, I just, you know, honestly, I just want to see a really good space shooter and, you know, a really immersive world. And, and honestly, to be honest... I would like to see everybody happy with the game, but I know simply that there's so many convenient or so many conflicting requests for the game that not everyone's going to be happy. Well, you can't you can't please everyone in the end, and yeah. I think right now Chris Roberts' goal is to just make the game that he would want to play, and many others following suit, and that I think is a more admirable goal than trying to make a game that everybody would like. Yeah. Trying to make a game that you would want to play. Even if it doesn't have everything you'd want, like I know people who hate Dark Souls, but still yeah. play it because they have fun, despite yeah. hating it. <laughs> you, you know, actually, the thing that I would really like, actually, thinking about the online version of the game, I would really like to see AI that is dangerous, right? And Eve, none of the AI is dangerous, right? I want to see AI that is sufficiently dangerous that people might prefer to fight a real person. Kind of you like know, how I, sleepers were at the very beginning of Eve before people well, figured them out. But even then, they got tamed. Even the incursions got tamed. I, I would well, really like... You know they talk about the PvP slider? Yes. You know, I would like to see an AI that is so good that people will slide it towards the PvP end rather than PvE simply because, you know, it makes for a better game and a better experience, you know? You know, that's actually a very interesting proposition. I've never had anybody propose something like that. Um, I don't know what kind of work would it be involved with this AI, like how hard would it be to program it, or would you just scale up its damage? Well, or, you know, the thing with computers is they're actually very, very good at pointing guns exactly where they should be. The trick is actually making them look like they're not good at that. Well, that's a good point. So you could probably configure an AI just to be a very good marksman and throw in the occasional hit or miss, but that's all up to debate, because then you'd have certain people complaining that the AI is too powerful. Well, would you rather fight a human? Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Let's do it. I, I just, you know, I want I to... If, if people... People are spe See, the thing is, people are spending all, these mon all this money on these ships, right? Right. And that only really makes sense in the online universe. So I kind of want people to be in this online universe and interacting in this online universe. You know, if you've spent, if you've backed for a, a rear admiral package and you then take the PVP slider and turn it all the way over to PVE, it's like, what are you thinking? You know? Yeah. What's the point? Well, you have lifetime insurance anyway. So if you, even if you lose your ship, you still have the hull. Yes, that's and that's, but, you that's know, better you know, than nothing. Right, there's a lot of things that will get fitted to that, and it's, there's still a question of how much money you can spend kitting this thing out. Well, let me let me put it this way: I love my rokes, and the amount of times I've had to pay 150 to 200 million dollars just for my hull has made me grind my gears. And oh. <laughs> Yeah, I used to love the Rogue. I, I, I thought Rogue was the most beautiful spacecraft in EVE, as far as I was concerned. It just looks, if you don't know, guys, it's like a space an train. office block in space. It's like a space train. Yeah, it's, it's brick in space that delivers a broadside at amazing range. And they were terrible for so long, and then they finally buffed uh, railguns and made them, you know, dangerous. pretty darn good. Yeah, dangerous. But, uh... Yeah, that was actually the first battleship I bought in EVE. I, I was really dumb. I was a railgun-focused Kaldari for a long longest time. Never really got into missiles. Missiles are <laughs> so fun. I was a terrible, 
terrible pile in Eve early on, and then I, you know, I just learned and learned and learned, and you know, now I'm sitting on a trillion isk because, you know, like once you get to a certain level, you just know how to make cash. And are you sure you really want to be saying stop. that out in the public? <laughs> well, what are, you know, like, I, uh, I'm quite, I'm quite happy at giving this to uh, people. Okay, fair enough. Just, that just putting I'm, it if, out there. Yeah. No, I'm sitting on about a trillion isk now, so... And at this point, I'm, I I pretty much just wait until there's a PvP and I happen to, you know, operation and I happen to be online. Fair enough. So you seem fairly comfortable with the way Star Citizen's shaping up. Is there any other final comments or things that you maybe wanted to add in that maybe have struck your fancy or maybe you really liked that you wanted to point out? Ah, well, God, so many things. I mean, well, the, the bigger ones, like some one of my friends just as of two days ago told me he pledged for the sole reason that the 300i, and this is again another military friend, has a similar cockpit to the F-35. And he is in love with the F-35, I don't know why. Uh, I have my own views on the F-35 program. But he just sat, he watched me sit down on it. He's like, oh wow, it's a really open cockpit. I thought it would be like, you know, in your face, like the Hornet. And he went and bought a 300i. And that's well, that, for yeah. him, that for him was a selling point. He's like, I like the open, open cockpit. Sure, I'll buy this game. And I'm like, it's okay, as long as it got you pledging. <laughs> no, I, I, I think, uh, I mean, I think there's a lot of people that still, you know, will want to pledge, but that's a very interesting reason to pledge. I, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, there's, I, I guess, ugh. Well, let's gonna let's. Edit, let's you're gonna have to edit this out now. No, oh it's okay. God. We'll scale it. We'll scale it down. What do but, you? Well, what has allured you the most that we haven't covered right now? If you were to pitch Star Citizen in ten seconds at someone and say you should get this game because, what would those ten seconds be? Well, see, if I was trying to sell the game, I would pretty much say, you know, this is a this is a bunch of spaceship nerds who have been desperate to have a good spaceship game and they've thrown their money in a collective hat in the form of you know cloud imperium games and it is now enough to make you know a pretty impressive game at those prices you know it's not going to be like egosoft who are operating on a shoestring all the time trying to make everybody happy and then producing x rebirth which uh has a lot of great things about it, but nobody likes any part of it. Unfortunately, I've heard about the problems plaguing it, sadly. Well, yeah, there's some design problems and there's some bug problems, but I think with, with Rebirth, actually... And so here's here's actually an important lesson for, uh, for Cloud Imperium, is X Rebirth, right, is, of course, the latest game in the X series. When X3... Or like when X1 was released, it was buggy. When X2 was released, it was also buggy. X3 was released, it was really buggy. <laughs> and the thing was, it was always released to these hardcore space sim fans who would buy the box and they would get it and they'd be like, complain via, you know, their bulletin boards <laughs> or whatever, right? <laughs> Email. And eventually it would get fixed. X Rebirth comes out. It's buggy, like X3. But on day one, it's on the front page of Steam. And that's really what it is. Like, you suddenly have this vast new audience that uh, wants things that work. Uh, and, of course, they're also complaining about you know, Battlefield 4 being a complete mess as well. Um, I, I like my shooter shooting, even if I crash every five right. games. <laughs> so with that in mind, think about the amount of rage that would happen if Star Citizen launched in a similar state. Right, with all that money thrown at it, uh, I mean, when people throw money at things, they become more self-entitled. I actually, right. I've actually looked at forums. If you look at forums for Kickstarter games, and I do linguistic analysis as part of my job, which is interesting, and I've kind of been doing this thing where I've been looking at the bulletin boards or the forums for Kickstarter games versus other games, and the amount of swearing and negative you know, comments is much higher on Kickstarter games. 
Does it become a, I, because of promises that were not delivered? It's more that people feel self-entitled. And so they feel that they need to drop the F-bomb all the time to, you know, say, I paid fucking money for this. And that's me, you know, saying... No you know, worries. You don't want... uh, there's... So there's this kind of danger in crowdfunding land that things between the self-entitlement and the money, uh, you can end up in a very toxic environment. Well, so I'm... the important thing for Cloud Imperium to keep in mind is that if they release stuff as an alpha, it needs to be labeled as an alpha, right? Right. And well... don't rush things, don't... You know, don't rush things, don't be afraid to delay things, right? Because as long as you've got an alpha out there, people are experiencing it, and there will be something going on, I guess. Well, I think that's a very good point to end on. I'm sorry if I cut you off here, but I'm starting to look and realize that I've grabbed you for a little longer than I said I would initially. That's so okay. I would like to again thank you very much for your time today. You've actually gone over quite a few more topics than... I originally had planned, and I think the audience here thoroughly enjoyed our conversation. So again, ladies and gentlemen, Scott Manley. Uh, Fly thank, safe. Thank you very much. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, if you've enjoyed the show, to leave a like or a subscription. It helps us out greatly. Click on the fuzzy little hawk on the lower left-hand corner, and be sure to check out Scott Manley's channel. He's displayed right now for you. All you have to do is click and go check him out. You guys take care and fly safe. <laughs>